Hello everyone, Aiden from NGT Academy here. Today's topic is the ever fascinating topic of botnets, which have been evolving over the last 20 years. Uh, to me, botnets are the evolution of malware. Uh, back when I was a kid, essentially malware in general were very crude. They infected your computer, deleted system files and ruined partition tables. And that was basically it. Now don't get me wrong. Yes, that was catastrophic in a business setting where you would lose data, but the functionality of malware I should say was just not quite there yet compared to today's modern day piece of malware. Uh, functionality botnets these days basically run the whole spectrum. You can imagine it, it can probably do it. Uh, botnets have been discovered that infect your computer with cryptocurrency miners. Uh, for what purpose, you may ask? Well, to make money, of course. Uh, the malicious actor utilizes your computer's resources, your electricity, and makes a profit by selling those cryptocurrency assets, and you get flipped with the bill uh, for mining them locally at your house. Botnets are also linked with spyware for the purpose of stealing your personal information for profit, uh, be it for identity theft or just by selling information in general. That's pretty interesting stuff, right? All right. So how exactly does a botnet work? Well, a botnet essentially works by basically four phases. Uh, the infection, the connection, the control, and the multiplication phase. Essentially what happens initially is a user out there gets infected somehow be it that user is essentially careless or that user was running a machine or a computer that was unpatched and had a vulnerability attached to it. Ir irrespective, uh, what happens then is after that computer gets infected, that computer becomes a zombie or a bot. That's why it's called botnet. Now what happens afterwards is essentially uh, that botnet then calls home. Once connected to command and control center, the zombie computer or the bot can be given instructions to carry out. One of the instructions could be to find other computers to infect or to participate in a DDoS attack, popularized by the hacking groups like Anonymous back in the 2010s. So essentially, if a malicious actor had two infected computers on day one, and on the second day, those two computers then infected two other computers on day two, you'd have four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and so on and so on, right? Uh, it is very easy to add to your numbers once you get to those points. Botnets have been discovered out there, uh, like the Mirai botnet, which has been had an estimated uh, 75,000 endpoints. Other botnets like Configure have had estimates in the millions of bots or zombies within their network. Uh, that is a lot of computing power to begin with. So let's talk about, you know, notable botnets that have been out there. Uh, notice a couple of these guys over here. Uh, these are some notable botnets that have been operation for a while. Uh, take your eyes to the graphic. Now look at the Zeus botnet. The Zeus botnet has been operation since 2007 to 2022 or 2022. Uh, that is roughly 15 years of operation. Uh, and that is longer than some businesses out there. Uh, some of them uh, went from 2007 to 2008 and then filled out. If you take a look, you can see that it is not out of the ordinary here or un uncommon, I should say, that a botnet operates, operates for years at a time. Now, the financial impact to organizations, uh, you know, a botnet can cause harm to an individual organization. Uh, these are estimates. Zeus has been roughly around 120 million, Drydex 40 million, and 3VE 30 million. Uh, Zeus, for example, for its 15 years of operation, that's roughly $8 million of damage a year uh, done by the Zeus botnet. Uh, that is quite a bit of scratch that really is in any respect, it's just, it's a substantial amount of money. Now that you guys have a sense of what a botnet is, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what exactly we should do to protect ourselves from these botnet infections. Now, uh, basically as an end user, there's not really much you can do except be vigilant. Uh, be vigilant to what you're doing. Run anti-spyware and anti-virus software. Make sure that it's updated on a regular basis. Keep your computer software updated to the latest version. Having an unpatched and older operating system on your computer basically adds a layer of vulnerabilities to your computer system. Always use internet firewall. That's kind of hard not to do these days. Most ISPs will provide you a very simple firewall. Uh, so it's not really, you know, it's not asking too much. Use common sense when deciding to open attachment or click on links. Uh, in emails or social networking sites. Yeah, be very, very cautious when you're clicking on things online. Uh, those are 
great ways of how to get yourself infected or to get yourself their CD parts in it. As a business, you should take a multi-layered approach to preventing botnets uh, with protection systems, firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, anti-malware and anti-botnet protection or endpoint detection and response systems. Uh, a business should always be deploying something called defense in depth or multi-layered protection. All right, so to that is today's quick lesson. Uh, and I hope you guys learned something. And this has been Aiden with NGT Academy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Jacob Hess here. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you, if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, then be sure to check out our IT engineer training programs at www.02engineer.com.